In this video, we'll learn about bill posting. Here on the administration side of the software, there is an item called bill posting. Once a dispatch has been completed, that action will send all related expenses of that dispatch over here to the bill posting screen. Common bills you will find here are driver pay bills, commission sales reps bills, owner operator pay, and outside carrier partner pay. Bills that were created either through auto payables or manually entered on the dispatch by the operations team that moved the order for your customer. This list can act as a great safeguard for you. This can be where the bill can wait until the proof of delivery has been handed in. As an asset-based trucking company, you will receive PODs from your drivers and owner-operators. As a freight brokerage company, you receive PODs from your carrier partners, along with their invoice to you for the movement of that freight. You will not want to post any of those bills until you have received the POD. So if the bill appears on this list, then that will identify all trips that you are still awaiting the POD on. So this is the screen to use when working your trip envelopes or invoices from your carrier partners. Internal bills such as driver pay, commission staff pay, or owner-operator pay are dealt with slightly different than external bills, like carrier partner pay. Let's have a look at internal bills first. Here is a bill for my driver, Georgia Green. When I open it, I can see on the payable charges I'm paying her 50 cents per mile for 2,976 miles. These types of bills require no further data, so you can simply open each bill, audit and edit, making any changes if necessary, and then you can post these bills individually using this post button. That will commit the record and will move this bill to either the personnel pay wizard or the owner operator pay wizard, dependent upon the bill it is, where you can create comprehensive pay settlement sheets and pay your employees. You can also post multiple bills in one step. Let's go back to our bill posting screen here. So I audited, I edited George's pay. I can now go into John John to have a look at his pay. I've got him set up receiving commission. He's a sales rep for me. While I can post them individually, as I've already discussed, I can also do multiple bills, switch the toggles on for those bills that I have approved, checked out, figured everything is fine with them, and then at the very top of the list, you will find a post button. It will post all the bills that are set to as approved in one fell swoop. For outside carrier partner bills, those require some additional data. So working through the invoices from your carriers, you can open the related bill. Here, you see an invoice from my carrier partner, Zippy Transport. I can open the bill using this open button right here, and I can enter for the details, like the invoice date and the date you receive the invoice from your carrier. Let's do that. So using our edit bill details, of course you're going to want to make note of your carrier's invoice number so that it can print on the check stub when you pay this carrier. So putting in the invoice number directly taken from your carrier's invoice and then your dates, the date you receive the invoice, the carrier's invoice date. Some companies to, um, schedule their payables to their carriers according to the invoice date. Some do it according to the carrier's invoice date or the invoice receive date and carrier's date. So you can enter those details, save the record, still audit and edit individual payable charges. So you can add in accessorial charges if you're paying uh, some wait time to your carrier or if you're making a deduction for a late arrival. You can take care of it right here using the edit button. Now you will want to 
post this bill. Posting this bill will commit the changes, record the carrier's invoice number, and we'll move it to the vendor pay screen where I can wait for you to pay the bill to your carrier. Now let's talk about all those PODs that are coming in for you. Let's head back to our bill posting screen. So those PODs are coming into you through trip envelopes from your drivers or from a carrier's invoice. Because you have supplied your carrier partner with your trip number through the load confirmation that was issued, this acts as your PO to the carrier and you will want to make note of that trip number on the POD. Your carrier should be using that trip number on their invoice back to you. That's your PO to them. You have a couple of columns here on your bill posting screen. You will always see the trip number listed here. So you can then make note of that trip number, match it up easily to the invoice the carrier is sending you, make a note of that trip number on your proof of delivery somewhere. As well, you provide a trip manifest to your driver or instructions by phone to your driver of what you're asking them to pick up for you. You will also give your company drivers and owner operators that trip number. So again, you can make note of that trip number on the trip envelope on the from the trip envelope this action will enable you to easily find the related invoice on the invoicing screen so once you've worked all your proofs of delivery and all your trip envelopes coming in from various areas you can then take your pile of proofs of delivery that have the trip numbers noted on them and you can navigate to your invoicing screen where you have a column showing the trip number and the related invoice number. This now gives you the ability to match that proof of delivery up to the actual invoice. Now, of course, not every expense will be related directly to an order, whether it be office expenses, insurance premiums, equipment maintenance bills, or any of the other many miscellaneous costs of doing business. To track those items, you will have to create a standalone bill, and we have two ways that you can do so. You can navigate to your payables list using the left navigation bar and click on the create button at the top of the list. This will bring up the create bill page where you can enter all the details of the bill. First, select the appropriate type of bill, whether it's for an internal person or a vendor, and then of course the vendor that you're receiving the invoice from. You can now put in your dates that you receive the invoice, the invoice number that is taken directly off your vendor's bill, and the invoice date, whatever that might be. You can even put a note in if you want to track notes on your bills. When you click the Create button, you then have the ability to complete further details. Categorizing that expense, come to the Payable Charges tab, add a payable charge, which opens up line items. Here in this pull down are all of your expense items that you've created, allowing you to categorize all of your costs for financial analysis data. This is an insurance expense, so I'm going to categorize it right to insurance, and I will put the units and the amount of the invoice I'm receiving. Once I add a line, I can then go ahead and create this bill. I can even post it right here. If I simply create the bill, it will go to the bill posting screen for posting, but I can take care of posting it right here as well. An alternative method of receiving bills is to use the incoming invoice wizard instead of posting bills manually. The wizard is found under our tools menu and will allow you to match up incoming voice invoices to existing unposted bills or create a new standalone bill and post it all in one step. There is an, a separate instructional document in our Learning Center for using the incoming invoice wizard. Thank you.